Hey everyone, welcome to Moving Matt. We do all things cameras with a dash of vlogs and a little bit of travel. And today we have some very exciting news for anybody who is looking forward to the Sony a7 IV. So we have some spec information and some confirmations and we have 100% confirmation that the Sony a7 IV is going to be the camera that is announced on October 21st. So how do we know all these things? Well, it's coming directly from Sony and it's leaked in kind of the most hilarious way. So Sony has been a very hush hush and top secret about this camera for pretty much ever. So top secret that even though all those Sony Alpha rumors, rumors have been coming out, there's still some people commenting on my page asking, what if this actually isn't gonna be the a7 IV? Well, with 100% certainty, we now know and the reason that we now know is because when Sony posted their live stream event for October 21st, they added keywords to this announcement video and anybody who is a YouTuber or content creator or whatever you wanna call us, well, we have tools to know what those keywords are. So with 100% certainty, one of the main keywords is A7 IV, A7 Mark IV. They put all these different keywords in there so we know 100% those are coming. But it's not just that, it also revealed quite a bit about the specs. So we definitely have a 33 megapixel sensor. You can see that right here where it says 33 megapixels. So for the people that thought that that was an odd number and thought that it was gonna be something different, well, here it is from Sony, directly from Sony. It is 33 megapixels. We also have here, it's saying 4K 60. Now for a while, it's been rumored that it has 4K 60. Some people are thinking that it's only gonna have the cropped Super 35 4K 60 that is downsampled. Personally, I think it is gonna have that downsampled 4K in the Super 35 mode, but I also think it is gonna have the 4K 60 in a full frame mode with pixel binning, kind of like they used in the Sony Alpha 1. And if they use that same algorithm or the same technique, then I think it will be very high quality pixel binning. So I think that is what's gonna happen, but we will wait and see. So what else did we learn about this camera through the keywords? Well, I will skip over to the photocentric side because this is a big information that we have not heard about. And that is it will have 10 frames per second. So I'm guessing with the 10 frames per second, they're talking about it with the mechanical shutter. And so I'm guessing the electronic shutter will be somewhere maybe like 16 to 18 or maybe even 20 if we're lucky, but somewhere in that range. Personally, I thought it was gonna be maybe the 12 and 20 just to match the R6. But with that all being said, since this is gonna be a 33 megapixel sensor, it is really kind of punching above its weight class as it is. And also it's competing with the R6 and it's not really gonna be competing with the R5. Because if we look at the R5, it is a $3,900 camera. And more than likely, this is gonna come in right around the 2,500 mark. So this is still very impressive for the 33 megapixel sensor to be getting 10 frames per second mechanical. And we will have to wait and see what the electronic shutter is, but I'm guessing it's somewhere around 16 to 18. And also we can see here that it does have the same processor as the A7S III. I thought that they would probably be using that chip considering the chip shortages. They would just wanna use one chip for as many cameras as they could. And it looks like that is the case. And I'm sure that it will have enough headroom considering it can do 4K 120 on the A7S III. So flipping back over to the video side, we do see that it has 10-bit 422. That's not much of a shock, but it is something that people have been questioning. And so here's the confirmation. It's 10-bit 422. Now, one thing that was a little bit more in question is if they would have the all-eye Kodak. And yes, you see it right here. It has the all-eye Kodak, the same one that is found in the A7S III. So that is very exciting for anybody who likes to color grade. Speaking of color, we also see that it has the s -Cine tone that is found in the FX3 and the A7S3 and the A1. People have wondered if maybe they were gonna leave out that color profile and just leave it for, you know, more of the high-end cameras or the cinema cameras. That is not the case. They are adding it to the A7 IV. Another thing that we see here is that it will have a very angled touch screen, meaning that it will have that fully articulating screen that we've been hoping for. And it was kind of a given. I pretty much knew that it was gonna be in there. I think pretty much everybody knew it was gonna be in there. 
but the people that were worried that maybe they would cripple this in some way and not add that screen, well, you can sleep soundly and get that pre-order finger ready. And also we do have the 15 plus stops of dynamic range. That means that at least on paper, it is matching the A7S III, which is very exciting because the A7S III really has the dynamic range of many cinema cameras. And the fact that you're gonna be getting this in a hybrid style for around $2,500, is pretty incredible. It looks like we have an incredible camera on our hands. So for the people that's been waiting for this camera for a long time, it looks like your wait is gonna be well worth it. We will see if there's even more surprises and what more gets confirmed when the actual event happens. And I will be covering all that. But in the meantime, you can check out this video right here and see my number one recommendation. If you can only get one lens for this camera, I think this is gonna be the best lens for you. If you've liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And until next time, Peace.